Hello! Today I thought I'd show you how to build a house. Well, not really, but we're going to make a little house block. It's not a traditional block, it's just a little house that I've drawn up to fit a six inch square, basically. Um, but uh, using, of course, traditional piecing methods and things. But I thought it would be quite fun to do a little house block. Um, I just love house blocks, so we're doing a house block. So we've got this roof, we're using uh, a few different shapes and sizes this time. The roof is made out of a two and a half inch strip and the corners are two and a half inch squares. And then the side background are going to be one and a half inch strips. And these pieces here are actually cut at two inches. So they finish at one and a half. And then the door is just a one and a half inch strip as well. So the block is going to measure six and a half inches. So a six inch finished block. And we'll get started on the roof. I think you should always build a house for the roof first. So here I've got my roof, it's six and a half inches long by two and a half inches wide. And then to make the corner shapes, we're going to sew some two and a half inch squares on. But we're going to mark on the squares, I've already marked mine, but I'll show you what I've done. Um, so with a ruler and a pencil, this is just a mechanical pencil that I use. I'm going to draw a line right along the diagonal. So I'm going to lay my ruler so that it goes right through the points of the square and draw a line right through there. And then I'm going to use the markings on my ruler and come across half an inch so that the half inch in line sits right over that drawn line and I'll draw a second line that will end up being half an inch away from the first line. So you need two of those. So I've already done the two of those and we're going to sew them to each end of our roof here. Now we don't actually need the second bit where we've drawn the second shorter line but it's going to be in the bit that we trim away. It was just a way of keeping the leftovers in a usable um, a usable form. So the other thing is when we sew one of these to each end you must remember to turn one of them round so it's going the other way because you don't really want your whole roof to be going off at an angle. I don't think that would be helpful. So now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and sew my little corners on to get my roof shape. So these are two and a half inch squares sewn onto a two and a half inch by six and a half inch strip for the roof. So right through, so if you sew the longer line first, right through the diagonal, and then you could sew the next one, seeing as it's sitting here. So again, just line up your square on the end of your strip there and make sure that this sewing line is going to go in the opposite direction to the other one. So there we've already built the roof just about. I'm just going to sew those other two lines quickly so that we can make good use of those triangles that we cut off. next one and then we're just going to trim away those corners. So again sewing right on that line that we've drawn. So with the ruler now I'm going to cut these, these triangles off. So I'm going to put my quarter inch, there's a line quarter of an inch in from the edge of the ruler right over the top of the longer sewing line. So that I'm going to cut up, basically I'm cutting halfway between the two sewing lines. I want it to be a quarter of an inch either side. And then we can discard this piece, we won't need that. And turn it around and do the same on the other end. And so when, when we open those out, and we'll press them in a minute, then we've got a nice roof shape there. And these pieces that we've cut off here, We've done that extra sewing line so that when you open that out you've got a small half square triangle unit and it was just a way of using up rather than having to perhaps throw away or having a whole bunch of triangles that you're probably never really going to use. Now you can use it. They're going in my little leftovers box. I'm saving those for something later. So I'm just going to press these corners on my roof now. I'm going to press them into the roof. And the other end as well. And there we've already built the roof. How's that? So that's looking good. So now we've got to build our house. So we're going to pop the door in. So there's our door 
and there's our two pieces either side of the door. So we're going to just sew those together. Make a little strip. Like putting the roof and the doors on first. If you were making several of these blocks, of course you could chain these through, but today we're just making one. So my door is half in, I'm just going to pop the other piece in now. So we've now got a little bit of walls around our door. And again, I'll just press that. Now I would probably press that away from the door. Um, mostly because doors usually sit in a bit from the wall and even though it basically sits flat that's how I think of it. So here we've got our walls with the door and now we need the little bit that sits across the top to make it into more of a house and so that one goes right the way across that. So these pieces here the door was cut um, three inches long and these pieces are cut three inches by two inches and this one here is cut, if I can remember, four and a half inches by two inches, and that's going to go across the top of the door. So we'll pop that. And this one has got writing, this fabric's got writing all over it, so I thought that was quite appropriate. So many walls have writing on them these days. Okay, so we now have a roof a door and some walls. So our house is happening. Okay, and now we just need a little bit of background because at the moment the house, the roof is too long. So we're going to pop a couple of strips and these were cut at one and a half inches um, by four and a half inches um, to put either side of the house just to give it a little bit of space behind it and allow the roof to hang over the sides a bit. And you could build a whole town of houses or just a little country village or just one house. And the houses could all have different coloured doors. They could have all different coloured walls. They could all have different coloured roofs. You could use up a lot of leftovers making houses. Okay, just about done. So we just press these bits now. Again, we'll press them into the into the walls. So the house is kind of sitting in front of the background. Oops. And this one. And we should be ready to pop the roof on top now. And yes, we are. There's our roof. So we're going to flip that over and sew that in place. That's not bad for building a house. Pretty quick. box it really wouldn't matter which kind of house I was building I just think that they something appealing about a house block of course along with lots of other blocks so there we have it we have our house already this is a six and a half inch block it's going to finish at six inches when you sew it in so we now have two houses this is the start of something where there's one or two there's usually more so I've made a little quilt using this little house block and I've just repeated the block right next to each other. You could do all sorts of things, footpaths and roads and who knows. I've just done my little village very orderly with nine blocks. So I've kept my roofs the same, although I've quilted them all slightly differently, but all my walls and I've alternated a light house with a dark house just to give it a little bit of variety, but I've kept the same background going through. Um, but a great way of using up bits and pieces 
Of course, your roofs wouldn't all have to be the same either. Um, so that's a fun little house, a little six inch house that you could do so much with. So enjoy that house.